Boy, did he thump that. Woo! <laughs> Good one. Beautiful. Beautiful color. Including the color sticking out of his mouth, which is bubble gum, cricket. And uh, this one's got the white tips on the fins as well. He's been in there a while, trying to get a little wild. Yes, sir. Beautiful trout. Everything still looks good on the old cricket. I'm telling you what now, you're talking about a thump. That was a wake up call. Oh man, another one in there. I very seldom will catch two wild rainbows. And then these are probably stocked at one time, but they've been in there so long that uh, they're starting to get the white tips around their fan and the colors are just phenomenal. Just beautiful colors. And the key to catching them is uh, small baits, light lines, stay back off the bank. And I want to show you something. Look at all the footprints there. Look at all the footprints. That were here. Look how they mashed that down. He was here yesterday. And Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday they were here. Or Sunday, Monday they were here. They had free. Oh, there's. I think that was another one. They had free fishing this weekend. And I'm telling you, there was cars everywhere. So these fish have been hammered. But a lot of people that come to do free fishing, they're just bringing their grandkids out. I mean, you'll see big bobbers, you'll see all kinds of things. But, they ain't me. I know how to pull one or two, so. Woo! Woo! Little native. The wild rainbow one. Probably a wild bow. The way he hit and run there. He was fast. It's not what we're looking for. We're looking for wash down stock trout. The last Thursday core last. And so far we've been catching the bigger bodies of water. I mean, there ain't been a little bitty pockets or anything like that. It's been at least two and a half, three foot of water. And it's been below stock holes. And a couple of them in stock holes. Right in there is where you ought to be. There's one. That's another one of them mountain trout or wild bows. I can tell the way they hit, they hit and go fast. A big trout, a stock trout, you'll see him roll or you'll feel him hit and you'll feel the weight. The little wild rainbows, buddy, they thump it. And most of the time when they thump it, they hit the hook and they don't bite again is okay. I'm not really wanting the sword to lift them anyway. But... A lot of manners. The sun was bright, I would be going to probably uh, Creek Chub, but it's just not bright enough. It's sort of produced. Big hole, good looking water. Got several of them down through here. There he is. Hold that one. 
See all the spots we fished down through there just wasn't big enough to hold a trout. Beautiful rainbow. This, this is a wild rainbow. Been in a while, maybe. Yeah, he start, he's got the white tips. Uh, it's a stalker, but the thing about it is they stay in there about six months and they start getting white. Start getting white around the uh, fins there and they don't have any clippings on them. Uh, yep, there goes my worm. But that's two on the white worm. We're going to fish that just a little bit longer. And then I think we might go to uh, maybe our, our pink cricket. I was, uh, I think we've hooked two or three on this. But that, that water was right for that fish. It had depth, had good flow, and all the little places we fished in between, there just wasn't nothing enough there for him. And uh, that's why that trout was where he was at. Sometimes they'll dump them in here. And I really like this because it scatters them. There's not a prominent hole here. But it's some very good looking water. And a lot of people will come down here because it's so open and kind of shallow. They'll throw Joe's flies, rooster tails, phantom martins. And these fish get spooky. So they look for a place to hide. And the places they hide is back underneath the laurel trees. And I'll show you right down here. Deepest water in about a oh, 60, 70 foot stretch is right here. And it's on the far bank. And we're going to try to get that. If you look over in there, I think I did a video here one time called Calling the Shot. And uh, I think. That was when I first come up with Appalachian baits, and that bush was alive at the time. Now it's dead, that laurel bush. And uh, I pulled a nice rainbow up underneath there. If I remember, this might be the spot, I don't know. I think it was here. Let's see what we can get out of here. Look at that. I told you, I'll get out of that bush. <laughs> I told you, I told you, I told you. Come here, buddy. I didn't even feel the hit. I just felt the line stop moving, and it felt mushy. We got him. Oh, there he got himself off. That's okay. He's right there. Beautiful fish. Now, that one there doesn't have any white tips, but... Uh, He's still laying right there. And folks, I try not to touch my fish anyway. And the only reason I was bringing that net and when I quit dragging it today, I just, it seems like I never catch a big one when I've got my net. So I've dragged that net around half a day and I said, you know what? I'm leaving it in the car. See if I can catch a big one. <laughs> it makes sense though. Every time that I go, without my net, I ended up either catching a big one or losing a big one. And uh, uh, it doesn't matter if I lose it, I'll turn back anyway. Unless it's like a 10 pound brown, then, then, I, then I would be tempted. I would be tempted. I, I definitely want to weigh them and measure them. But pay streams now, I keep them. Like uh, I'll keep them over at Big Tomlin. I'll keep them if I'm fishing Cedar Springs, places like that. Uh, I will keep the fish most of the time. And like the one that I just caught there, that's laying, still laying here at my feet. Um, still laying right there. Uh -huh. that's, the, that's the right eating size you want, right there. 
And like I said, they, they get over in that deep water against the bank. And it's all about your presentation, getting your bait where it's supposed to be. If you can get it back in there to them, they'll hit it usually first time it comes by. But the, the key is don't get on top of the hole, stay back. And don't make a big splash with your bait when you throw it in there. You just want a soft, subtle presentation. After they've stopped, this one's not a real, real big one. But I'm gonna try to get him out of this hole and let him go down the creek this way. And the reason for that is he'll last longer if we can get him out of the hole. Uh, if somebody comes down here and throws that in there, they're gonna, they're, a lot of them will keep that fish. And we're doing catch and release. I don't know which way he went. It's gonna be a good day. I think Alan's picked the right bait. He seemed to like that bubble gum one. Bubble gum. All right, try it from the back end. And that's really, I'm fishing downstream, but what I'm doing is I'm, I'm letting my bait drift instead of throwing it out there and jerking it like I would have meant I'm not doing that. And that little size 14 hook is the two split shot is doing the trick so far. I mean, that's three. Uh oh, I think I'm hung. Double hung there. Feels like there's a root or something down in there. Okay, we gotta retie. Yep. Okay, caught uh, two on bubble gum. Now we're going to my favorite, sweet tater. Now this is an orange and it's got some flake in it. And uh, I'll tell you this is, now my sinkers are just a little bit too close. I want to back them up about 10 inches up the line. Two split shots. And uh, but old sweet tater has caught a lot of fish for me. But I know I can catch them on bubble gum, so we're just trying out different things, showing people what we've got to offer here and how to fish our baits today. One thing that people don't realize, this water for the past week and a half since they stocked has been dropping. We haven't had that much rain, and it's supposed to rain today. So these fish, they're moving to where they can feel comfortable. Uh, where you might've caught some in the shallows, it ain't like that anymore. They're not in the shallows because there is no more shallow left because the waters went down. And a lot of these fish will be transitioning to somewhere deeper. So as you fish, you can't overlook just little bitty places. You've got to hit all of the places. But now the water's so low, probably not any there. And you just don't know where these fish is gonna be. But one thing that I wanna tell everybody about, coming up right here, if you got a laurel bush down in the water, a lot of times that can be a good little hiding spot for a good fish. Cause they like the shade, they like to feel protected. The birds can't get to them. Here, here at this creek, we have a lot of blue herons. 
we have eagles and you can actually jerk that worm in front and just twitch it and let it go back and forth and a lot of times they'll come out there and nail it but rule number one fish is fish where the fish are and there wasn't nothing there that was interested so um, you got to go in behind it and there's shade in behind it and there's a little bit deeper water right over here You gotta stay back. That's the key. This water's clear enough. Now see this, you don't need a lot of sinkers, but even the couple of split shot I got on there, what it allows you to do is make longer casts and control your bait a little bit better. I started off, a, we did well on the bubblegum worm, and we did good on the white worm. Did so so on uh, sweet potato, but we had so many small trout hitting the, the sweet potato worm, sweet tater, I call it, and uh, we missed a lot. In hindsight, we should have been fishing these crickets uh, if you wanted to catch all those small four to six inch trout. That would have done the ticket for you. But we've managed to, I think we've got a limit of, of rainbows today that are above seven inches. And we've kind of fished hard. And we fished a lot of water. But I knew it was going to be tough, but that's okay. But just look at what a beautiful place to fish. Beautiful.